What's cracking everybody? New video. So today we're gonna go into um soft white underbelly. And this one is called Gang Member Interview. And they're interviewing an individual by the name of Johnny. So uh I don't know this story, but it was recommended that I uh I check it out and do a reaction. So here we go. Johnny, Johnny what, uh, what neighborhood did you grow up in? I'm from Santa Fe Springs, Cantarana, that's southeast LA. I mean, Whittier and Norwalk, uh, we're the only neighborhood in two cities. We take up uh, a section of Whittier and Santa Fe Springs. So we're the only gang in, uh, in southeast LA that occupies two cities. So that ends up being a big gang? Yeah, we're a big gang. We came out in uh, 1941. Uh, we used to be called Flood Ranch, but uh, they changed the name because there was a lot of frogs right there by the river bottom. So they changed us to Encantarranas, um, which in English means singing frogs. And uh, in my hood, you couldn't be from my neighborhood unless you had family members. Maybe your brother, your sister, your dad, or your mom. If you didn't have nobody, no kind of family members in the hood, you couldn't get in. And that lasted till about 89. After that, went a little bit a uh, different, different way, different. Uh, uh, somebody had created an action, you know, and they, what he did was, uh, we got at him, we let him know he wanted to get in the hood so bad, but he couldn't get in because he didn't have no family members. So one of the guys threw out there, okay, well, bring us two bodies and you can get in. Well, he didn't bring two, he brought five in one weekend, you know. So we let him in, you know, so he broke that tradition, you know. And that's my home. I'm trying to be cool, man. But you guys know I like to clown, right? How is homeboy skinny and fat at the same time? <laughs> Whoo wee my boy looks like he's about to slump over. He's tired. He's just tired. That's all it is. But yeah, my boy is skinny and fat. <laughs> oh, he got got a little ink on him. He got a little little names and shit. Is it, let, hey, let's just see what he's saying. No, it's just me clowning. Don't take it personal, Johnny. My homie today, uh, right now, he's in Pelican Bay. He's doing like about eighty years. But uh, that's he broke the tradition, you know. So. That tradition was broken. Me, I don't really, I didn't really agree with it, due to the fact that, you know, I feel that if you know somebody for a long time, since say grammar school, they're most uh, likely not to tell on you. But nowadays, that you get people from other cities and stuff, there's no type of, uh, there's no type of, uh, yeah, loyalty or you know, camaraderie there, you know. But uh, I've been from my neighborhood since the age of 13. I've had my tear drop. That was the first tattoo I got. I got it at 15 years what old. What is the teardrop tattoo you got? Well, you know, it didn't represent that I had been in prison for a few years because I was only 15 and I wanted it filled in. So it really represents uh, when you uh, do the deed, you know, in other words, you take care of business, you put somebody in the dirt, you know. So I earned my teardrop at 15 years old. 15. And it's been on my face since then. I was going to remove it, but my little girl, she's from my neighborhood. She's my home girl. She told me, nah, that if I removed it, it would. Wait, 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 wait. Is he talking about when he says my little girl? Is he talking about his daughter and his daughter is his homegirl? Hmm. Be me, you know. So I left it on my face, you know. And I, I went to prison, did 17 years. But I've been to juvenile hall, YA. I've been to a placement, juvenile camp three times. And uh, I went to prison first time for uh, two counts of kidnap. And I was picked up for three counts of murder and two, four counts of kidnap. They ended up convicting me of two counts of kidnap. They gave me 15 years. I did uh, seven out of that. Hold on, listen, listen, hold on. I'm, I'm confused. There's a lot of numbers right there. I don't just wanna, you know, let's just go back a little bit right there. Let's try this again, Johnny. I've been to a placement juvenile camp three times and uh, I went to prison first time for uh, two counts of kidnap. Oh, okay. And I was picked up for three counts of murder and two, four counts of kidnap. They ended up convicting me of two counts of kidnap. They gave me 15 years. I did uh, seven out of that. Got out for a year, went back and did seven more straight. Got out and then went back and did four more. Right now, I just barely got off parole. So right now, I'm doing all right, you know, but. So you just got out? Yeah, I've been out, I've been out for about two years now. But uh, I've been to the county here and there, you know. But the longest I did was seven years straight. They had gave me seven years with 80% for a 20 stack of crystal meth. They gave me seven years for, seven that. Years for that. Yeah, they were trying to strike me out, trying to give me a 25 to life for a 20 bag of glass. I ended up having to take a deal for six years, seven years with 80%. I did every seven. I did it over until the last day. I was in there getting high. 
I was in there stabbing people, you know, went to the shoe program. And then that's when I got affiliated, you know. Yeah. They, uh, they took me to Sacramento, they took me pack, sent a packet to Sacramento to see if they could, uh, you know, another. See, I don't like talking about this type of stuff. I didn't know this, was, but let, let's see, let's see. The words uh, placed me with these gentlemen and uh, I didn't have no photos with anybody in it. I didn't have no letters. I didn't have no identifying marks. One thing about me is I never got any type of marks except this one where, you know, it affiliated me, you know, where they can see my body and say, well, that tattoo right there means something, you know. All my tattoos meant something. I got my daughter's name, my wife's name, and my frogs. Yeah, my frogs in the back. Yeah, I wanted to earn my frogs, you know. I got seven total, you know. In my hood, you had to earn them. If you didn't earn them, then we would take you out ourselves. One of my little homies ended up getting five frogs on him. He didn't earn them, so they killed him like a week later. Yeah. And the, the my frog signifies what? Uh, each frog represents a soul. Yeah. Somebody Somebody's soul. Fly. Yeah, so once you get a soul, you can put it on your body. Yeah, and one of my homies didn't earn it, so they killed him. My other homie that earned, he had a triple murder. I don't know, maybe, I mean, that could be a thing. But, you know, I would think, like, um, you don't want to... You don't want to say that, right? And um, you know the authorities are going to know what those things mean. So um, <laughs> how long do you wait before you get it? Because uh, there's no statute of limitations on bodies. So uh, and with meth being the way it is, getting people to... Um, turn on their homeboys and turn on their family the way uh, meth is done, you know. I don't know if that's if that's true. That's that's kind of that's wild. He put three frogs on him. This guy put five. So the guy that had three killed the guy with five because he never earned them. Mainly, I was the one that used to find people that couldn't get found. Get couldn't get found. You know, I used to go undercover. I've had my hair red. Uh, I've had my hair blonde. You know I mean, I've shaved my mustache off, wore glasses, I grew my hair long, shaved my head. I used to change my identity just to, a lot. Just to change your identity? Yes, to exactly. To yourself from? Getting found, getting caught. By who? By the FBI for a while. The FBI? Yeah, the FBI was on me for a while. <laughs> you know? Is this for reals? Um, so when I do these reactions, man, I'm trying to be, <laughs> I'm, I'm always going to be honest. You know, I like to have fun, man. And um, I want to see what, why is the FBI after a street criminal? That's, you, I mean, what federal crimes is this man committing? You know, he dyed his hair and uh, grew his hair out. And shaved his mustache and wore glasses. So far, I don't see nothing the feds want. But he may be, uh, he may be an international spy. <laughs> they were on me for about, maybe about, to total they were on me for about 10 years. Due to the fact that I had five family members that were those guys. If you're, you know, you could pass for Caucasian with blonde hair. Yeah, yeah, it could, exactly. I used to cover up my tattoos with makeup. Yeah. You know, I used to do a lot of things, you know. Sometimes I have my mustache turned real small or I'll let my gold chain mustache and I'll shave it real, real thin, you know what I mean? Or sometimes I'll wear glasses. If I've had red hair before. Yeah, I had red hair before. They were looking for me for a, they were looking for me for a double murder and I changed my hair to red. But they ended up busting my homies. Wow, there you go. If um, those of you uh, on the run for jaywalking, just dye your hair red. <laughs> I hope this guy is telling the truth, but he seems like he's, um, you know, he's a little gowd right now. Those of you that know it, uh, it means if somebody's a gowd, uh, you know, he got the eyes, he got the little raspiness in his voice, and he's scratching a little bit. Um, so hopefully, police, if you watched this, if you watched his video, I think he's just, um, he's just flying right now. He's flying and he's spitting. And you know when I guess when you're in that state, everything sounds good, and you believe it. It's just that me and him had the same <clears throat> first name. So in prison, would you spend half your life in, right? Yes. In prison, how different is the gang world than outside? 
No tiene ese gangue, you know, out here, there's more room to get around. There's more things you can do and get away with because you can duck and hide and maneuver. In prison, you ain't going nowhere. You can't hide, you can't duck, you know, you got to face everything head on. The way I learned it best is, if you did it, you did it. You know, there's one thing I did, they, they asked me to stab somebody, I ended up stabbing them. And then the other guy asked me, why did you stab him? I said, well, I felt it was the right thing to do, you know. But yeah, I was the type of person, if I did something wrong, well, then stab me, you know. And due to the fact that I carried myself at a certain level, well, my punishment was severe. My, push, my punishment wasn't do 50 push-ups or do 113 burpees. My uh, punishment was they would get a knife and maybe they would make the handle. They would make the handle about five inches long and you got the seven inch knife. So they would leave about maybe about an inch and a half out and they would stab you with that. And that's just a checking, more or less. That's just don't do that again. You know, I wouldn't get a beat down. I wouldn't get regulated. Yeah, because I knew better. So they went and made a, they made a knife. They got a knife that was seven inches and put five inches of handle on it. <laughs> yeah, that was your checking. Um, so I've seen people get checked. Uh, I've been, I've taken part in checking somebody. And uh, I've never seen nobody make a handle. Every, every, you, most guys make the handle as small as they can so they can just make sure it's not going to slip out of their hand because checking or not, the cop doesn't know, oh, that's just a check. They're not really trying to kill them. Once you move, the cops move. And um, so every check-in that I've seen, it's been, uh, you know, we are going to try to uh, remove you from the earth. If you survive, God was on your side that day. Um, so I've never heard of somebody having a seven-inch knife with a five-inch handle. <laughs> but, you know, I haven't been everywhere, you know. I had been in prison. There was no excuse for uh, this black dude bought an ice cream, and I went and got his ice cream and took a bite. I know better than that. But if I did take a bite, well, then my punishment would be severely. You know, I've been stabbed twice just getting checked, you know what I mean? And each time I got stabbed about seven times. But it was just because I needed to get checked in a level that I carried myself on. You know, I already been in prison five times. There was no excuse for me, more or less. And I'm a strong believer in that. I'm a strong believer in, you get punished in the, you get punished in the, in, in the we'll say, uh, at this level because you carry yourself at this. And what he's saying there is, is true. Um, if you know better, then your punishment will be at that level, um, it's true, but I, but but the whole um, checking by whacking you and only using a certain amount of the the piece on you, I, I don't know that part. Never seen that, but I I do know that there are people that are um, this the the tune up you're going to receive is going to be based on what you knew, what you should have known. But if there's if if it's going to be something where they're going to put somebody on you or put some people on you. You know, they, they're not going to tell those guys, hey, take it easy on a man, you know. I've never seen that. This level. <clears throat> a lot of things can be told, but, you know, in a certain way. You know, there's information I can give you, but there's certain information, vital information that I can't give you. Yeah. You know, as in names, places, but I can speak of things I did, you know, uh, in my life, you know what I mean? And I did it all, you know. I've, 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 I've heard about things that dudes did in prison, you know, like I heard about a guy that... They sent four dudes to stab this guy, and he stabbed them all. Well, when that came about to me, and they sent four dudes at me, I did the same thing. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, Johnny. So I'm starting to have uh You know, I wanted to give you the benefit of the doubt, you know. Um... I could be wrong. You know, maybe he did stab him off. Maybe that's one of the times he dyed his hair red. He put some Kool-Aid in his shit. They were like, is that the guy we're supposed to get? I don't know, homie. Bop, 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 bop. He got all them. <laughs> they would have kept moving on him, though. All four of them. And they were supposed to come and get me, and I ended up stabbing all of them. So apparently they sent the wrong guys to get at me. So what they did was they didn't try it again. You know what I mean? And that was simply out of hate. Okay. Is this thing on? We found one. 
It's for sure we found one. So they sent four. Now, the way prison works, if they're sending that many, there's no fixing it. There's no coming back. So they're not going to send four. I don't think I've ever seen four sent. I think the most I've seen is three. Um, and it's for a particular reason. That's why I'm saying if they send four, there's no fixing that. There's no coming back. There's no off. Man, he got them. You know, he, that red Kool-Aid in his hair threw everybody off. Man, that dude's sharp. Man, let's let him slide on the stand. Doesn't work like that. Johnny, Johnny, ease on up, player. You did too much today. Out of, out of, you know, people just not liking me, you know, not, not liking the way I did things. But like I was saying, I was 19 years old in prison, and I was running all the Sentinella, and I was level four and level three, and I was only 19 years old. You know what I mean? And I was speaking to gentlemen that were 45, 50, been to prison like 10, 15 years, and I had more rank than them for the simple fact was the way I carried myself, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, stop mad dogging me. Look at the way he's looking at me right now. What? Don't mean stare off. Staring contest. I did this one before. Whoever blinks first loses. Watch this. Respect you, oh shit, man. this dude don't blink. And you earn. Oh, he blinked, yeah, fool. I, I want to say. Jail, you know? oh, I, I think he blinked. I think I won. Um. So he's uh, 19 years old and he carries himself in such a way. <laughs> that he's been placed in the leadership position and not only did he say he was running the yard but he was running all four yards in a prison all four facilities even though he has zero access to the other three yards whatever yard you're on you're on <laughs> oh damn this dude so we got a mexican one now you know, it's funny how lately I've been getting in the comments how I have a problem with whites and I don't have a problem with any whites, any blacks, any Asians, anybody. This is a reaction channel. And now, look it. Oh, shit, hold on. Is he getting size? Look at, Is he flexing on us right now? Because earlier he looked like he was a fall over. He was skinny. And yet he was fat. He had a, a role. I don't know. I'm going off track right now. Let's, let's hear this. And the first time I went through, you know, I didn't really do anything in general. I did my time and got out. The second time I went through, I went balls out. I stabbed everybody and anything, you know what I mean? And I ran five prisons, the whole prison. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you can see it on the bottom, man. Every yard, every dude. It's impossible. You can't do that. Um, you're not there. You can't put out fires you can't see. Hey, man, hey, Soft White on Underbelly is a, is a good channel, man. Um, but I think that, like I said before in another video I did, another reaction video I did. Get out of there. My dog's being nosy. Uh, another reaction that I did, um, I think when people um, have an addiction, and I'm not putting that on Johnny, you know, you guys make your decision. But when people have an addiction, my understanding is soft white underbelly is, is based in somewhere in, on, or near death. I'm um, dead. Uh, skid Row. Now, word's going to go around quick. Hey, if you have a story, you can tell this dude. You can get a little bit of money, you know, and then maybe get your high or your beer or whatever. Hotel room, stay warm, whatever it is. But um, I guess it's cool that he's giving people a platform to talk on uh, and tell their story. But the story should be based on some kind of reality. And um, being that this man that, that has this channel doesn't really have an, uh, a full grasp on uh, how things run inside the walls, then, you know, these type of stories get told. Um, but there's nobody, not if you're Mexican, if it doesn't matter if you're from Southern California or Northern, Northern California. One dude cannot run every single facility in a prison because he's not there to see it. You know, things need to be dealt with immediately. And if you have to wait, you know, and the he's to what the time he's talking about, there wasn't cell phones. Now there's cell phones where you can make a call. Hey, homie, we got this issue over here. That wasn't happening. Uh, this is some bull. Every dude, I was in charge of everybody. I ran Sentinella, Ironwood, Chuckawalla, Tehachapi, and uh, Delano. And I'm talking about all, all five, every dude on there, I was responsible for all of them. And I was 23 years old, 24 years old, and there was a lot of times that, 
dude got into it with the Muslim brothers, and they don't play, you know, the Muslims, they don't play, especially on a level four, you know, and one of the little homies I left in charge because I went to a family visit, when I came back, this dude just totally disrespected these individuals, and they wanted to take his win, doing that. They were lifers, they didn't care, they didn't kill this fool. So I had to get at the Muslim guy, and he's an older guy, and I said, yeah, you know, apparently I heard that you wanted, you wanted someone to talk to that was in charge here. He said, yeah, can you get him? I said, well, yeah, I'm that guy, you know? And he looked at me, he's like, man, you know, how old are you? And I said, you know, age is but a number, man. <laughs> and the way I pushed him was, I said, excuse me. <laughs> oh, damn, man. It's, it's not that likely that the guy running the yard for whatever faction isn't going to be known by other factions, right? They'll figure it out. Uh, I have a pretty good guess. But this, uh, <laughs> uh, this whole conversation, well, wow, how old are you? It's not, if there's an issue that's so serious that they want to take somebody's win, your age don't matter. It's let's have this discussion right now because it's about to get real. You know be highly appreciated if I can get a little bit of your time and understanding, you know? And when I pushed him in that fashion, he was a lot quicker to speak to me, you know? And he spoke to me, we resolved everything, and I had little homie removed, you know, because he did disrespect the man, you know? But I was 23 years old at that time, you know what I mean? And I was already running a prison, so. You know, and I got out here, and I ran three cities in Orange County, and I'm- Oh, <laughs> <laughs> No wonder why the feds were after him. No wonder why he had to um, trim his gold. Because he, he kept his gold tee, but he made it thinner. And then that threw everybody off. And then he threw sunglasses on some now and then. And you couldn't figure out who he was. And then sometimes he would throw his glasses on. Sometimes he would throw his glasses on like this. Look, boom. And then you'd be like, oh, is, I think that's Johnny. And then immediately he'd be like, oh, they might know who I am. And he would go like that. And he would put him upside down like that. And they'd be like, nope, that's not him. Wrong guy. <laughs> he's running five prisons three cities uh 72 nations this dude is amazing i'm from la so you know when i got out of prison the first time you know they knew of my reputation when i was a youngster i earned my bones in the hood by finding people that couldn't get found in other words i was the guy that they called when this guy burned the, one of the main connections and they wanted him found like i said i used to change my hair color Changed my name, my appearance, and everything. Well, one time we had this girl. She was moving pounds of glass. Pounds. Moving maybe six, seven pounds a day. And glasses. nobody... Glasses. Crystal, glass. crystal meth. And nobody could get close to her. So I sat back and I thought... San Johnny. Glasses, man. Let's see this. This is. We're going to end after this because this is a 40-something minute video. 46 minutes. We're 10 minutes in. That probably means we're damn near on 30 with the way I run my mouth. So let's see if we can get through this. But how could he get close to this woman? You how? Mean? So what I did Let's was figure I it out, Johnny. My appearance, oh, I went and borrowed an ounce of glass that was powerful. It was pure. Pure. No cutting or nothing. Nothing. So I got that ounce of glass. Mm. I went to this girl's house and knocked on the door. They opened the door. I now let's let's set this up. She was sometimes moving seven pounds a day, but he came to her house with an ounce. I spoke to her, you know, I introduced myself as something totally different because I knew she was on top of her game. She didn't want nobody to get close to her. But she opened the door and let him in. The way I got closer was I went in there. I got on the phone, had a fake conversation, told this guy, hey, man, send that 15 jack grand over here, send the 10 over here. So now she's listening. So what I did was I got the ounce of dope and I threw it on the table, boom. And I told her, go ahead, man. You go ahead and try that. So on the way out the door, she's like, hey, you forgot your ounce of dope. I said, no, nah, that's nothing. I get that constantly. You can have that. So what I did was I gave it to her. Really, I borrowed that ounce from somebody. But I used it so that she would see that that was nothing to me. That was nothing to him, you know. And she didn't want anybody to get close to her, but she opened the door to a stranger. Um, let him throw dope around and get on the phone. <laughs> Whoa. You know, these guys that tell these stories, man, there's so many loopholes, but how come the people that are interviewing them never ask a question? Because I wanted to get to the pounds because that's what she was dealing at. Nobody that she was dealing pounds. Again, she was dealing pounds, but his ounce guaranteed the way this story is going to go. I haven't seen this video. I guarantee that the pounds she has are irrelevant because she needs 
more ounces. <laughs> get close to her. So I left the pounds there, I left her my number. She, I knew she was gonna get high, she called me about 15 minutes later, she said, damn, this shit is pure. How can I get more of it? I said, it depends on what you want, you know? I wanted to get her up to the pounds, due to the fact that she was only saying she was dealing ounces, but I knew she was dealing pounds. So she called me the following day, about 10 in the morning, she tells me if I can come over. I go over and I get there, and when I get inside, she's sitting with two individuals. Now, I know these two individuals have a weapon because I have a weapon myself. But what happens is she has to use the bathroom, so she excuses herself. She's had a tropeo. So at that time, it gave me the opportunity to talk to these two individuals, oh, which yeah. these two individuals were her torpedoes. Yeah. In other words, they were used to protect her. Yeah, absolutely. But now I needed to get at them. Get at them. Excluding her. Exclude her. So I spoke to them in Nahua. Oh. And what Nahua is, it's, it's the Aztec language. And I knew that these dudes knew Nahua. <laughs> <laughs> He knew that they knew Nahuatl. But he's calling it Nahua. Nahua are a people. Nahuatl is the language. But he knew that they knew somehow. Very few people know, but there's three people in a room that speak it. This is amazing. I knew of one guy, his reputation, and who he was. So I spoke to him in Nahua. The other one didn't know Nahua. So as I'm speaking to this guy in Nahua, the other guy don't understand what we're talking about. Well, what I'm really doing is I'm lacing this guy up and letting him know who I am, who I represent, and oh, who yeah. I work for. Yeah. Because he's unaware of He knew your I'm reputation. Doing. He knew his reputation, but he doesn't know who he is. I'm letting him know why I'm there. Yeah, let him. I'm there to take over her business. Yeah. Keep him as a torpedo. Of but course. But yeah, I'm going to take over her business. Yeah. He's been with her and he's been loyal to her, but now he's going to be disloyal to her, but he's going to keep him on his team because he's probably going to be loyal to him. It all makes sense. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to infiltrate yeah. on what she does. Yeah. So she came back into the room. Now I have one of her torpedoes on my side. Fuck yeah. But he's really working for her. What? You know, this is my inside, what? man. This is how I'm getting in. Oh, like, I didn't the, use like the Denzel Washington movie, right? The inside Man? Is that, was that the movie? Okay. This is, this is strange. Well, man, I use nobody. I use it an individual that was protecting her, and that was my way in. So what happened? Yeah. When she came out the shower. We talked a little bit. Now he's on my team. So what we hold on. She took a shower in the middle of a business meeting. This is like porn. Did was we we got her to do a deal for five pounds. And what happens was we went to a Starbucks. All we did was we were switching cars. She had one car with all the dope in it. And then she had another car. They were same color, same brand, mark and everything. So what happened was she ended up giving the keys to the individual who was taking care of her. But all along, he was working for me. He had already got paid. So we ended up getting her for five pounds. That's it, man. I've had enough. These reactions, eh? We're, we're on. I'm gonna write down in case you guys want me to do a, another one. I'm gonna write it down. We're at 13 minutes and 44 seconds. 13 minutes, 44 seconds. Please don't ask me to do more on this guy. Please. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um. Um. Hopefully, while <laughs> I was gonna clown him some more, I'm not gonna do that, man. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. Share the video with someone who you think will enjoy it. Uh, if you didn't, let me know why. Uh, <laughs> this might be the funniest dude. At all the reactions I've done, this dude might take the cake. I think he does. Um, but it looks like he's sobering up. So, um. <laughs> Hey, everybody, please be safe. Be smart and tell the ones you love that you love them. I'm out. All right, Johnny.